Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So another medium problem today from Lee Goods, the problem number is 494. The name of the problem is target sum. So you're given an integer array nums and an integer target. You want to build an expression out of nums by adding one of the symbols plus and minus before each integer in nums and then concatenate all the integers. For example, if nums is 2 and 1, you can add a plus before 2 and a minus before 1 and uh, concatenate them to build the expression plus 2 minus 1. Return the number of different expression that you can build which evaluates to the target. So basically we are given with the nums over here. So as you see in the array that we have uh, a bunch of integers over here. Here we have 5 ones and we have a target of 3. So in how many ways we can use the plus and minus sign in order to come up with um, this uh, 3, right, the target. So over here you can see that there are several ways, right. So these are the 5 answers that we see over here. So we can do a minus 1 plus 1 which makes it to a 0 then 1 plus 1 plus 1 right which evaluates to 3 or probably we can say plus 1 minus 1 and then plus 1 so basically this minus is moving one place you can see everywhere right so there are five ways you can uh, come up with this answer right so we need to figure out in how many ways we can come up with the answer and we should get our solution right so uh, do give it a try it's a typical recursion problem. Do give it a try. Just try to think about a recursive approach which you can use in order to solve this problem. And uh, once you have given a try, please head over to the solution and check it out. So let's move over to the board and check out the solution. So I have taken the same example from lead code. We have 5, 1, and k is 3. That's our target that we want to achieve, right? So basically, how do we approach such a problem? So first thing is that we have uh, 5, 1s in our hand and we have 2 choices every step a plus and the minus right and this is our space that we are going to explore right so initially i don't have anything right so what i can do is basically i can go for a choice over here that i can either start with a plus one or i can start with a minus one right so this is where our function begins so from this branch this plus one i can again go in, go deeper into regression and let's say i have you still here right so I have used this one right now it will move on to the next pointer. So this pointer will come over here and I have two options at every step right. So I will go into a recursion from here I spawn two branches out right. So I have created the two branches and what I know in this branch is that plus one is coming from my parent so it will not change. So I am keeping it with the yellow color right and what I can do over here I can have another plus one. This one is this next one do keep in mind. Or I can try out a minus one, right? So I have come over here. Now I have used. Uh, so just keep in mind that we are recursing on this branch. This branch is yet to do, right? So again I go to my next index over here. So it will come over here, and again I will have two more possibilities coming out of both the branches. So for this branch, I know what I have inherited from my parent is a plus one and a plus one, right? So it will remain in yellow. And what I can do now with this new one, I can do a plus one. Or I can try out a minus one, right? And again, we go into the next index over here, and we try out the same thing once again. So once again, I have inherited this three plus ones, and so I'm going to try out with the plus one and the minus one. And again, I move my index to the next element. This time, I've inherited five plus ones, right? Four plus ones. And now again I can do a minus plus one and the minus one. So now since we have reached to the bottom and we have no more element to check over here, so we evaluate them. So once we evaluate, we get a result five from this and we get a result of three from this. Wherever we get a three, what we do is we store the result with us, right? Because this is our intended result that we are looking for. That is a three. So we have so we have done for one of the branches, right? So we need to complete for the other branches. So this is how this entire algorithm is going to work. So we were, so we are going to start our recursion and we will go down to the depth of the tree, right? And at every step, what we'll do is we will check both the paths, one with the addition, the other with the subtraction. And uh, we are not, we are just going to keep a track of the sum at every level. Here we'll say that our sum is two, here it is say that we are going to pass on these values. But we are not going to act on them immediately. So we'll just be passing them throughout our recursion. We'll have a 2 over here, we'll have a 5 over here, and we'll have a 3 over here, right? We'll pass on the sum continuously. 
and what we'll do when we reach the level of the size of the array right this is of the size of the array right this is level one two three four five so we have five elements right so when we reach there we are going to see that the sum that we have carried so far is the target that we are looking for or not if it is not then what we are going to do is we are going to return zero saying that no this path cannot find one so what will eventually happen is all this recursion will go up to your level five right and at every point we we fork out two branch of re, uh, recursion right one is for the plus the other is for the minus right just, just for an array of size five will end up creating a huge tree like this right we have just created one of the sub branches over here right we have one two three four and five levels so here also we have one two three four and five levels right so at every level we have two choices to make either a plus or a minus <clears throat> so how is the complexity of this tree going to be like so this will have a 2 to the power of n complexity right because we have two choices and it's a recursive function so it's going to get wider and wider right so over here we have which is equivalent to 2 to the power of 5 which means 2 into 2 4 into 2 8 into 2 16 into 2 32 that is a 32 nodes that we'll have over here 1 2 3 4 these 4 4 8 4 12 4 16 and another 16 so we have a 32 nodes over here right so this is the complexity of the recursion that's going to be right so what we will do quickly is we'll jump over to the code so the thing with recursion is though the tree and all if we um, we visualize it it looks literally scary but when you write the code it becomes very simple you can get these things done in just three or four lines of code so that is basically unbelievable power recursion has right you can express this kind of structure with just three or four lines of code that's it right so let's head over to the lead code and check out the code we are going to uh, create a recursive function that we have talked about and uh, we will see that how that function will help let that the function return uh, int so let's put a public and, uh, int. and uh, we'll say the name of the method is count target right and wh what are the parameters that we need over here we need the array that we have received so in nums is the first one and we need the position that we are working on right so if you remember in uh, the solution also we have maintained this position over here right so that's uh, a key element to it so we need that uh, parameters and to start with it will be definitely zero so the other parameter that we need is the sum that is the running sum so basically we have also maintained this running sum at every step right and also at the end we need to evaluate that the sum has reached the target or not so definitely target would be my another parameter right so these are the parameters that we are going to work upon right so when we didn't have anything initially what we do is we take the number have the positive have the negative both and then we pass on to the next level of the function right so we called count target with the same array and we are going to evaluate for the next position right because this position that we got is already consumed and how it is consumed this will be consumed inside the sum so initially the sum is zero right so uh, uh, let's put the uh, signature over here that how we are going to call this so we are going to basically say we'll return count target count target and we'll be passing the nouns our boss is zero our sum is zero our target is target that's what we are going to tell him right so initially the sum is zero so if i have to add this number so i have to take this number that is there in boss right and i have to do a plus and a minus how do we do that so basically what we'll do is we will take the num possible element. this is the element that we are considering which we received initially as uh, uh, zero so the first element we'll take and what we'll be doing is we are doing we are, uh, minus over here so we are going to say that with along with the running sum that we have got we are going to add a minus of num pos right and um, target remains as is so there is no change in the target and also we need to check uh, we need to check for the other recursion right wherein we take only the pos so this is for the negative scenario and this is for the positive scenario i am forking out two branches so whatever i return from them i'm going to add them up and i'm going to send them back right so what am i getting as a return i'm getting an integer as a return but we don't have we don't 
have a return statement as of now. So what we are going to do is we are going to put the uh, termination condition for the loop over here. So we say that when nums.length has reached my boss, right? That means we are at the end of the array and we have nothing to consume, right? We will be returning. So what will be returning? We should return one if the sum and the target is equal, otherwise a zero. So if sum is equals to equals to target, in that case, I'll be returning a one. Otherwise, I'll be returning a zero, right? So at every recursion, we will go till the tail and we will, for this example over here, what will happen is he will return, he has spawned two sides, right? He has spawned two sides, just like our code over here, right? So what will happen is he will give him back a zero and he will give him back a one, right? And what he's going to do, he has received from both its scholar. So he's going to add these two up and pass it back. So he will send back a one. Right? That's what we have been doing over here. We are doing a plus over here, right? Now he will this this cycle over here we haven't completed. He will also compute similarly and pass back something. So let it I'm putting a question mark because we have not evaluated it, but I'm sure you got the thought process by now. Again, what he will return back to his caller is whatever value he has received. These two values he'll add up and send back. Again, he will receive similarly from his edge as well, from all his subchilds that we have not created. So basically, this child over here, which I have depicted in this diagram. So this will propagate back, right? At every stage, this is going to propagate back. He is going to listen from these two guys and send back, and he will send back whatever he has received from these two guys, right? So this is how the answer for this branch will propagate to the top level. So back to the code. What back to the code? We are done. That's the code, right? We are returning. So let's run the code. So that's why I said you, you should uh, never underestimate the power of recursion, right? It's very powerful. It uh, literally helps to write very simplified code, right? We have seen that such a big tree that we have seen it's just depicted with three or four lines of code, right? So yeah, our submission has been accepted and um, I hope you got the solution over here, right? Though it's uh, giving us a 50, 517 milliseconds with 11.99%. But uh, what I wanted to mention over here is another problem uh, puzzle for you over here. So the code that I have written over here is not optimized, right? So there is a huge chance, chance of optimizing this code, but uh, that was not my intent. My intent was to tell you how recursion plays a key role over here. So if you are familiar with the recursion, then do give it a try to implement memoization into this. If you put memoization into this, the things will be much more simplified because we are doing a lot of repetitive work which can be eliminated, which I have not deliberately uh, added into this code, but uh, I will leave that up to you. And if you can put that somewhere and share the link with so maybe you can try to do that optimization and share the link for GitHub. I will leave this open-ended for you to implement uh, memoization. So it is a very good candidate for memoization, right? Because we are doing a lot of repetitive work, right? And uh, that's a good way of optimizing it, right? So I will keep this video short and uh, that's all from this video. We have covered the complexity part as well. So today I have created a video wherein we have talked about to the bar of n. So this is a very good can uh, candidate for a two to the power of n time complexity, right? And in terms of space, we are just using the stack space. So if you wanted to consider that, so you have to do the power of n. A normal space, we are not using anything. If you if you doesn't want to consider the stack space, then it's order of one, right? So yeah, that's all from this video. Do keep safe and uh, stay at home. Don't go out. And um, hope to see you guys soon again. Bye bye and take care.